I'm Susan Carla Medina. I have a confession to make. This year lang ako nagkaroon ng Facebook account. I know I'm late jumping into the social networking trend, but so what? So, we'll be visiting in this episode a place that is new to me, the internet and our Facebook page. To see who friends me, who likes my post, and who share their thoughts and love travel time online. A few weeks ago on our Facebook page, we asked you to be part of this special episode and share us your pictures and your choice of your favorite travel time destination. Viewer Rico Cruz chooses Boracay because he says the sand and sea are unlike any other I've seen. Boracay wins over Bali and the beaches of Thailand. No argument about that. The whole world, it seems, has discovered Boracay. It is hard to believe that this teeming vacation and leisure spot was once nearly deserted stretch of beach. Boracay is located in the province of Aklan, off the northwest corner of the island of Panay, 345 kilometers south of Manila. The island is approximately seven kilometers long, dog bone shape, with the narrowest spot being less than one kilometer wide, and has a total land area of 10.32 square kilometers. The more popular white beach, in turn, faces westwards and is favored by majority of the summer pleasure seekers for its almost four kilometers of sugary white sand and slowly sloping seafront. If you're traveling on a tight financial leash, wanting to experience local flavor, or looking for trinkets, or even a tattoo as a souvenir, Go to the Talipapa, where you can even have do-it-yourself meals fresh from the market. Along the beach side, there is no shortage of things to do. From kayaking that tests your upper body strength, or maybe a more languid ride is your style, then the Parao sailing is for you or ride the banana boat for some splashing group fun. Or maybe let loose the speed demon in you and board a jet ski for an hour. There seems to be something always happening somewhere along this white stretch of sand 24 seven. Pounding the sand all day and still gallivanting in the strip at night. Catch a quick meal at any of the mall's many foods and continue on with a merrymaking there with live music. Meeting and greeting people from all over while promenading along the beach at night and bravely stepping into the bars and losing oneself on the dance floor. And of course, you can stay at the beach and just be, enjoying the view, feeling the wind in your hair, and the sand and the surf beneath your feet. A 
Alongside our request for your favorite travel time destination, I opened up myself to some questions from you. Willem Garay sent over a whole barrage of questions. In what way do you think can the Filipinos participate best in the tourism industry? By seeing the country and looking for the best places, the best crafts, the best food, the best people, and being proud about it and telling everybody about it. That's how you become part of the tourism effort. Is there a place in the Philippines that you have not visited yet? If there is, what is it and why? Yes, there is. La Union. Why? I don't know. Would you consider featuring the Sulu Archipelago, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi sometime in the future episodes of Travel Time? Sweetie, we've done Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, and Basilan twice each. And they are beautiful. If you could be the Secretary of the Department of Tourism, how would you spur the growth of the tourism industry? I would not be the Secretary of the Department of Tourism. I don't want to be the Secretary of the Department of Tourism. Nobody would ask me to be the Secretary of the Department of Tourism. Let Ramon Jimenez do it. He will be very good at it anyway. If you were a Philippine destination, what would you be and why? I think I would be Mount Apo because then I would be on top of the world or at least the Philippines. Since a picture says a thousand words, viewer Norma Adamos let her pictures do the talking and the voting for her favorite, the beaches of Cebu, and Bohol. Great choice, Norma. The Bohol Beach Club in Panglao is still one of the most enduring tourist havens. It probably has the best beach fun in all of Panglao. And the Olona Beach Resort, supposedly named after a popular sexy star of the 1960s, is where sun worshippers and beach moms can have the time of their lives, just lazing away under the sun. As serious divers go under the waters and visit Panglao's famed coral reefs. Or if you want serious adventure, you must head off to two other Bohol spots, Pamilakan and Balikasag. Balikasag Island is actually part of Panglao. 1.5 of its 25 hectares have been developed into a resort and diverse paradise. Here, Bohol's ecotourism program comes into full play as divers and visitors are encouraged to enjoy nature while helping to maintain its fragile balance. Pamilakan Island is just off Baklayon, where fishermen used to hunt whales for a living. With waters rich in algae, the waters of Pamilakan is home to 13 species of marine mammals, including the sperm whale and the dolphin. On Bohol's neighboring island, Cebu, there is also an unspoiled beach getaway called Malapascua. It's three and a half hours by land from Cebu City to the town of Maya, where you then board a banca for another 30-minute ride to Malapascua. But the trip is worth it. 
a virtually undiscovered beach paradise. Malapascua is Boracay before the crowds came. White sands, blue waters, and just enough development to keep the island looking comfortable still. Me encanto e viva las Filipinas, writes Willem Garay as he chooses vegan Ilocosur because it made us proud that this part of the country still preserves our culture and heritage. Personally, I think Willem liked it because it put him and his girlfriend in a romantic mood in the trip. Spanish town city of Vigan is, of course, famous for being a living museum, deservingly included in the UNESCO's list of World Heritage Sites for its cobblestone streets and a unique architecture that fuses Philippine building design and construction with colonial European architecture. The capital of the province of Ilocosur Vigan is actually an island separated from the mainland by three rivers. Patterned after the design of the walled city of Intramuros, Vigan was established in 1572 by Juan de Salcedo. It was later called Ciudad Fernandina in honor of Prince Ferdinand, the son of King Philip II of Spain and it became the seat of the Archdiocese of Nueva Segovia. It is quite simple to get to Vigan, if you are willing to brave the 7 to 10 hour ride. You can also fly and land at the Lawag International Airport and then take the bus back to Vigan, an hour and a half away. When staying in Vigan, check out Villa Angela first. The most colonial of the several colonial hotels in Vigan, Villa Angela is steeped in history. And if it is good enough for Tom Cruise, who stayed here while shooting some scenes for the movie Born on the 4th of July, then it may be good enough for you, right? A great way to get to feel the town is by taking a walking tour beginning at the plaza where we see the ideal Spanish layout of a progressive town. The plaza is located at the center of the town with the great cathedral of St. Paul as the focal point. You can then walk over to the Arzobispado, the official residence of the Archbishop of Nueva Segovia, which was once the headquarters of Emilio Aguinaldo but which now houses the Museo Nueva Segovia. Take a peek inside the Burgos Museum, where the undoubted star is the collection of primitive paintings by Esteban Villanueva, documenting the famed Basi Revolt of 1807. You can also take a carretela ride while visiting the more than 190 historic buildings around the town. Like the Kema home, where there is a volada or invisible corridor that runs the length of the sala and dining room. Along Crisologo Street, you can buy knickknacks as well as hand woven textile called Inabel. While in Rizal Street, you can check out the massive wood-fired kilns of Pagbunayan potteries, which produce vegans' famous huge jars called burnai, used for storing everything from vinegar to fish paste.
Another favorite is Koron in Palawan, which my Kalao says is still unspoiled by night spots and bars. A true nature adventure, it embodies what the Philippines has to offer. Or, as Dave Ong says, it is a utopia. Indeed. The uniqueness of Palawan's island can easily be seen from anywhere in this final frontier of the wild. Coron lies north of Palawan and is part of its Calamianes group, a scattering of more than a hundred islands which embodies all the finest characteristics of the region. My favorite destination that Travel Time has featured is Palawan, Coron specifically. Uh -huh. In the past, we've all only known Boracay as the popular beach destination in the Philippines. Mm. And when I saw Coron featured on Travel Time, I was really interested and I was sort of excited to know that there are a lot of other beaches in the Philippines mm. that are if not just as nice, even nicer than Boracay. Mm -hmm. So when I watched that episode, it made me want to go to Coron and visit. When I decided to visit, I found the stuff featured on the um, show very helpful mm -hmm. in, in choosing where I'd go in Coron. Coron is the third and smallest of the Calamianes' main islands. But what it lacks in size, it more than makes up for in wonders. The trip here starts with a trek to Kayangan Lake. My favorite place in Coron is Kayangan Lake, uh -huh. um, mainly because of the limestone rock formations and the clear water. Uh -huh. And also, it's very interesting that what you see on top of the limestone formations are the same as what you see under. Uh -huh. And also, one of the tour guides there mentioned that when they went up the limestone rocks, they'd see the same seashells as the ones under. This was once underwater, and it's so beautiful. Um, up to now. In Coron, I went to the Makinit Hot Springs, mm -hmm. which was very relaxing, and I've never been to any other hot springs in the Philippines, not even to the ones in Laguna. Mm -hmm. So this one was like a big complex of hot springs. But it was very relaxing, mm -hmm. and then the view was really nice. It was like different shades of limestone.